It's a mess in this attic Lot going on but there ain't no need to panic Come on up and join, we getting wild, getting manic Spitting truth for all you fanatics uh, Every week got something new to say Ain't no filter, this shit coming straight from the brain It's coming straight from the brain Yeah, it's coming straight, coming straight from the brain What's up, everybody? Today is Tuesday, March 16th, 2021. This is A Talk in the Attic, and I'm your host, Kirk Ross. Better yet, my name is Kirk Ross, and I'm addicted to music. Oh, wow, that really worked. It's as if a piano has been lifted off my shoulders. Hey, did somebody say piano? Because today's episode is all about music, folks. Who am I kidding? Every episode is all about music, at least to me. Because weaving songs in and out of my weekly spoken word monologues is a true passion of mine. So like I said, every show is about music, even when it's not really being talked about directly. On the occasional Tuesday morning in which I'm not exactly bursting at the seams with creative energy, guess how I push myself through it? That's right. Music, such an intelligent and intuitive audience we've got here. Truly the best audience in the biz. That last message was brought to you by Pandering who you might remember from such classics as, wow, boss, you're so right, and if I'm elected, there's gonna be soda machines in every classroom. That's right, folks, pandering. Because without it, how else could I create enough positive rapport with you, the audience, to ensure that you're ultimately adequately forgiving of my pitchy singing performance that will round out this very episode? Okay, albeit rare, I do awake to certain Tuesdays with severe writer's block, and my tried and true method to beat the block is to listen to music. Of course, when I say listen to music, what I really mean is blast music rather loudly in my sound-treated studio while belting the hell out of the lyrics as if I myself am experiencing whatever heartbreak or ecstasy the artist was experiencing when they wrote the song. And a good song, by the way, will allow you to get there, right? If you let it. That would be a great time for a quick diatribe on my belief of writer's block. Writer's block is bullshit. It's never that we don't have ideas, it's that we don't have confidence in our ideas. Which is really because we don't have confidence in ourselves. As of late, however, I haven't exactly been listening to music to get through writer's block. No sir or ma'am or any fluid designation in between. I've been playing my way through it. And I must say, I'm legitimately obsessed with playing my way through it. But now, instead of listening to an album, busting through my writer's block, and then diving headlong into writing, I'm playing piano and singing along for hours on end, which kind of defeats my initial intentions, doesn't it? It's quite remarkable, really, what started as a means by which I can clear some space for me to write has become the very impediment that's in the way of my writing. It's truly come full circle, folks. Sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset. Today's episode is going to be all about my favorite topic, music. You know, tunes, jams, the language of the soul. M-U-S-I-C, motherfucking music, people. So let's start the show. was, of course, Imagine by John Lennon, or at least my version of it. Probably my first favorite song of all time. You heard that right. My first favorite song. A couple dozen have been given that moniker since. More of a misnomer, really, than a moniker. But hey, I've got a lot of favorites. I'm a passionate guy. What can I say? Earlier today, I recorded myself practicing Imagine and then sent it out to a couple of my confidants. One of those confidants replied that he's impressed with how quickly I'm picking up the keyboard. But he had to, quote-unquote, imagine 
the video without my vocals in order for him to really appreciate it. Uh, that text was hilarious. It was very likely accurate. And it's ultimately what prompted me to provide an instrumental only rendition as our lead in today. So you can thank Rob, once cited for sarcasm in the workplace, gentlemen, for that soothing, lyricsless version that you just heard. In Rob's defense, the collective vibe of the feedback I received on my singing amounted to a general good effort from all my other confidants. My friend Michael told me that he appreciated the Alma, which in addition to being a small Presbyterian college in central Michigan, apparently also means energy of spirit in Spanish. That's probably the most positive note that I received. Zach told me to throw some auto tune on that bitch and I'd be sitting on a sitting on a sitting on a banger. Throw some auto tune on that bitch and I'd be sitting on a banger. So that's encouraging, kinda. But moving on. Quick show of hands, who here remembers acting along to songs that would come on on the radio of your parents' car while you were in the backseat as a kid? My mom would be up front rocking the soft rock hits of mid-Michigan's WGER 106.3 up front, and Delilah would spin a sad song about heartbreak. Then you best believe I would be in the backseat, leaning on the door, staring longingly out the window. Imagining how I myself would look if I were a leading man in a romance flick. Of course, a little rainy weather always helped me slip into character more easily. How many of you put your hands up when I ask that question? Oh, come on. Some of you had to do that too. Or maybe you could relate to listening to the oldies with your dad when Roger Miller comes on. Trailers for sale or rent. Rooms to let 50 cents. No phone, no pool, no pets. I ain't got no cigarettes, Albert. And then, of course, upon hearing that lyric, it would lead us down a path of, hey, Roger Miller smoked cigarettes? Cool. I kind of want to smoke cigarettes now. Roger Miller died of lung cancer, son. Let's go get you some candy cigarettes instead. I have so many memories that are inexorably intertwined with the music that was either actually playing when the memory occurred, or more commonly with whatever music I was into during the era of said memory. I'll never forget the time I was with my brother and mom when an old Elton John madman across the water cassette tape was wearing so thin to the point of dropping out sporadically, sometimes for 15, 30 seconds at a time. And every time the sound returned, my mom was lockstep exactly on time still. Justin and I were amazed. Well, we're still amazed, honestly. Because my mom is a huge Elton John fan, and who can blame her? She imprinted that love directly onto me, too, and I'm so grateful for that. Although recently, it seems that Post Malone has supplanted the top spot in my mom's musical heart, and as odd as it is to say for me and probably for my dad, I'm pretty sure that Post Malone's got her actual heart as well. Maybe even her loins. My loins, Kirky? It's awesome, though, because Posty has inspired my mom to commit to learning guitar, something she's wanted to do her whole life, which in turn helped me to commit to learning piano. In addition, Posty's opened my already open-minded mom's mind even further to see past certain physical traits and the stereotypes that so often tag along with them. Face tattoos, for instance. I love everything about it. I really do. I guess I only have one question, and that is... Posty, can I call you Dad? Let me take you back to my first real concert. When my friend Michael invited me to join him for the Hootie and the Blowfish concert at then Pine Knob Amphitheater, back before it became that place that Eddie Money plays at every week. We were just in sixth grade at the time, so naturally, we made the rookie move of buying a Hootie shirt and then actually wearing the shirt at the show. Folks... Never wear the shirt you buy at a concert at the concert. In fact, it's not even kosher to wear the band you're seeing at the concert at all. Of course, I do subscribe to the do-whatever-you-want lifestyle these days. But if you're not quite there, then perhaps heed my warning and wear the t-shirt of an obscure, unrelated band when you go to a concert again in 2029 or whenever it is. Anyway, Michael and I decked out in our oversized Hootie and the Blowfish Fairweather Johnson album t-shirts, fresh off of our first experience with Gaspacho at a pre-concert restaurant, we're ready to sing our little hearts out to all the Hootie hits. Hold My Hand. hand. Only Wanna Be With You. you. And of course, Let Her Cry. She sits alone. 
A song that I had regularly used as the backdrop to that old Stare Out the Window and Salk move I talked about a few minutes ago. When Hootie, who I later came to learn was actually named Darius, but at the time he was still just Hootie the 12 year old bucktooth me. But when Hootie sat back down and had a beer and felt sorry for himself, Michael and I were right there with him. But we were 12, so beer wasn't exactly an option. Besides, our pure little minds were under the influence of something different that night anyway, secondhand marijuana smoke. <laughs> as Mikey's dad called it that night, the ganja? Granted, we were no closer than 20 meters from the nearest ganja that night, but Michael and I were nevertheless convinced and certain that we were secondhand high. We giggled the whole way home. For the first time in our lives, we truly appreciated that our hands were attached to our bodies. Suddenly, we fantasized the now craveable gazpacho from earlier on. What a night. Thanks to Mr. and Mrs. M for such an impactful one. I'm serious about that. But now let's move forward a couple more years to eighth grade, a year that saw hair growing in funny places, and even worse yet, erections growing in funny places. Come on, Kirk. It's almost your turn to solve this algebra problem on the board. What are you going to do? School dances became a focal point for my boners and me back then which meant only a couple things, at least for my crew. Number one, let's all play intense games of basketball in the gym whenever there's fast dance music going on in the cafeteria. Cafeteria was the dance hall, by the way. Secondly, let's make sure we sprint in there as quickly as we can whenever a slow dance comes up so we can dance with our girlfriends. Key here is that you need to make sure you're nice and sweaty before Boys to Men came on. Our girlfriends, aka the girls that we used to be friends with until we started going steady and now we're terrified to speak to, I'm sure they loved our halftime stench as Brian McKnight urged us to smash our pelvises into each other despite our mutual trepidation. This would be the point at which I'd sample R. Kelly's bump and grind, but I can't do it. Especially given the patina that's developed on the appropriate lyric here. My mind's telling me no, but my body, my body's telling me yes. Come on, R. Kelly. Listen to your brain next time. I can still remember the walk-up songs for each and every baseball teammate of mine. For the record, in case you're wondering, my two songs were Dirty Deeds, Done Dirt Cheap by ACDC. Dirty Deeds, Done Dirt Cheap. And About Mr. Brown by OAR. I guess I was into bands that only had letters back then. But honestly, these songs age pretty well. In fact, they've almost reversed age in some sort of Benjamin Button fashion because they're better now than they were in the context of a high school baseball game. Given the subject matter of each of these tunes, Dirty Deeds, Done Dirt Cheap, and About Mr. Brown, Murder for Hire, and Heroin Addiction, Play Ball! Shout out to our then PAMC and still great friend Pat Tanner who would go so overboard at times with the volume of her entrance walk-up songs that the umpires would regularly have to confer with the press box. And while we're on the subject, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the time that Pat called an Ernie Harwell-esque long gone! That literally lasted from the moment the ball cleared the fence until the batter, Jeff, reached third base. It had to be a good 15 or 20 seconds, longer than what I just did, legitimately. The ump began hysterically waving his arms and yelling at the booth, stop it, you stop it up there, it was classic. I've tended to catalog my relationships over time according to what music that person liked. Not by choice either, but instead resulted from the nostalgia that music brings with it. The very same Pat who announced our baseball games, for instance, is a big New Jack swing guy. That's a specific type of hip-hop from the 1980s and 90s. Just this past weekend, I heard the song by Black Sheep that's called The Choice Is Yours on the radio here in GR, prompting me to think about Pat and all the great times we've had together. What's up, Black Sheep? No, not who I am or when I'm coming, so you sleep. Wasn't in my room or wasn't in your So I texted him a quick video of the sunny cityscape with the car radio blaring Black Sheep in the background. 
which then prompted him to create a Spotify playlist documenting his favorite New Jack Swing songs, specific to the 1992 to 1994 era, of course. And if this whole thing doesn't summarize the power of music perfectly, then I don't know what does. Because the music reminded me of Pat. Then Pat and I talked about music. And then Pat shared some of that music with me. And now I'm listening to that music with Pat. Not in a physical sense, sure. He's on the other side of the state. But in every other meaning of the word, I'm with Pat when I'm rocking his playlist. And it's a truly powerful thing, especially during a time when spending real time with real friends has become so difficult. If you're listening and you personally know me, then I guarantee I have some music attached to you. And I bet for a lot of you, I've been assigned a certain musical profile as well. If you're listening and I don't personally know you, then hit me up. Let me know what kind of music you like. I'll stash it away up here in my figurative attic, and when we meet in person someday, we can listen together. And until that's possible, we can all leverage the efficacy with which music can transport us to different times and different places with whomever we want, whenever we want. If you're interested in hanging out with me, then let's do it virtually. Check out the Spotify playlist I've linked in the show notes, and when you've got some time, throw that playlist on, close your eyes, and let's chill. Maybe you're not in the mood for music. Maybe there's too much stress, too much pressure. I've been there myself. In fact, there was one era in my life in which I truly wasn't listening to music, and that was when I was super depressed. The absence of music was, in fact, the indicator that finally showed me just how sad I had been. But then came Jessica and Rainbow Kitten Surprise, Anderson Pack, Hobo Johnson. The rest is history, right? If you're not feeling as positive and energetic as you'd prefer, as you'd hoped, then still try to give this playlist a shot. I'm so excited to listen with y'all. In fact, I truly predict that we'll feel it in our souls if we all listen. And this is one thing that I'm not joking about, because I really believe that. I'm so grateful for music, for all the artists out there sharing themselves so openly and candidly so that I can make a little more sense of this world. And no matter how you view music, I hope you're all finding a way to do just that as well, to find some peace in this chaotic world. And if it's not music, then what is it that you're using to unwind, to find creativity? At A Talk in the Attic, on all the socials, hit me up. I'm truly interested in hearing from you. And now, I'll have to make good on my promise that I'd be giving you all a pitchy Volca performance, but first I want to explain exactly why I'm sharing this part of me, which I still lack confidence in, and for good reason, as you're about to find out. I'm sharing this part of me because A, it's so effing fun, B, because I'm working hard to get better at it, and C, because I want to be proof positive that it's okay to kind of suck at something and still be proud of how far you've come. So many of us, I included, avoid trying new things because we're not good at it. Um, no shit, we're not good at it. We haven't tried it before. I'm not a good singer. I'm not a good piano player. But I'm so much better at both than I was a couple months ago. And that's the only comparison that we should all be focusing on, right? It's not about how good I am compared to Elton John or Roger Miller or Post Malone. Dad? It's about how good I am compared to me yesterday. I hope there will be some value in this exercise for you, too. I hope it's not just me doing something for myself. Maybe you'll get inspired to pick up an old instrument. Maybe you'll revisit an old album that you haven't listened to in years. Maybe you'll be so turned off by my performance that you'll never tune in again. All possible outcomes, all fine in the grand scheme of things. You know what they say. Every rock star wants to be a comedian, and every comedian wants to be a rock star, right? So some of you are probably thinking, rock star, comedian, well, where do you fit into this equation then, Kirk? To which I'd say, I bet you laughed a little bit at that last joke. Now, finally, my rendition of I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston. Peace out, everybody. Just kidding. I can't sing that song. Are you kidding me? Here's Tachycardia by my main man, Connor Oberst. Peace out, everybody. It's a mass grave. A dollar fifty rest in place on the north face. There's a rope I've got to climb. I'm a stone's throw. Everyone I love and know, but I can't show up looking like I do in an old suit. 
My hair is slicked back nice and smooth in a core room. Sweat rolling down my back to bed dream. I have it seven times a week. No, it's not me, but I'm the one who has to die. a cool draw to slow his tachycardia in a dark bar the world just melts away and he feels fine if he can just lose track of time it's a good sign when he can't stay awake on a slow Day. The rain against my window, pain of the cafe. She spills her coffee ground, and the same thought hits her like a cinder block. Life's an odd job that she don't got the nerve to quit. Yeah, it's just there At the bottom of those spiral stairs It's the world's fair The future's on display In the still night They turned on the electric lights And the crowd cried out That everyone looks so amazed